Hello, and welcome to the New Rochelle Bar Oral History Project. My name is Bob Ullman, and I welcome Greg Varian to be interviewed for this program. The date is September 29th, 2021, and we're both participating in the recording of this archive. I have agreed to and signed the interview is release form dated September 29th, 2021, and Greg Varian has agreed to and signed the interviewee release form. With these formalities completed, let's begin the interview. Greg, I'm so excited to be interviewing you. I mean, the, the listeners or viewers may not know, but you have uh, interviewed me, and this is my opportunity to get even with you. So first, let me ask you, give me a little of your background. Uh, I did not grow up in New Rochelle, although my parents did. Uh, they were both born, they grew up in New Rochelle. They, they lived here, and uh, it was a year before I was born that they moved from the house my father bought on the GI Bill, uh, which is uh, the last house standing on Fifth Avenue, where the new uh, uh, project is with the CVS. Uh, the last house standing remaining is their first house on the GI Bill. And they, they uh, uh, moved to Larchmont, uh, that, that village uh, far away and uh, from here. And, uh, and that's where I grew up. I attended uh, St. Augustine's uh, grade school, Archbishop Stepanak High School, uh, uh, Providence College, uh, where I was a, uh, my major was history, uh, and I ran the, uh, the college radio station. Uh, and and uh, from there, uh, I, uh, before going to law school, which I didn't know I was ever going to do, uh, I started work in radio in a, in a, a very small station in which uh, I represented the entire news department uh, in, in uh, western Kentucky. And uh, it was uh, after a year at that uh, where actually uh, the deal was, uh, you come and work for us, we pay you almost nothing, uh, we get you experienced, and then we help you relocate in a year uh, to a bigger station. And, and uh, I actually got hired by a group uh, that was buying the largest station in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, where I would be news director. And I expected, okay, uh, Chattanooga, then Washington, D.C., and then New York City, move over Cronkite. Uh, and, and I get a call after I've come back to Larchmont uh, for what I think is a two-week vacation, and they say, uh, don't come down right in the way. We're, we're in litigation with the uh, seller of the station, a gentleman by the name of Ted Turner. Uh, yeah. So it's Ted Turner that is responsible for me going to law school uh, as I was unemployed here in New York and, uh, and becoming a lawyer. Well, what was your first uh, employment in the law? My first employment was as a law clerk, the first law clerk hired by the law firm of Finelli, Moore, Bosco, Penzel, and McMillan, uh, which was, I think, the eighth floor of 271 uh, North Avenue. Uh, and uh, uh, when I graduated uh, uh, from Pace uh, Law School and, and was admitted to the bar, uh, I expected that I would become an associate at Finelli, Moore, Bosco, Penzel, and McMillan. But in that period, uh, just that period, the firm split up. Uh, the Finelli wing going to Bronxville and the, uh, the other wing uh, becoming uh, Campbell, McMillan, uh, uh, Danzig, uh, 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 boy, I'm, this is this is where the memory becomes a problem. Uh, uh, many many variations on that law firm later, but the firm that I became an associate with uh, was a merger of a firm from Yonkers, and and it was established in Bronxville on Pondfield Road by the name of Griffin, Finelli, Letson, and sure. Coogan. Uh, that marriage lasted a year. And uh, the Finelli wing exited and came back to New Rochelle. Uh, I came with them. Uh, that subsequently developed into uh, Finelli, uh, Burns, and Neville, uh, and then to Finelli, Varian, and Staker. Uh, the offices were uh, in uh, uh, the, I, I refer to it as the Fred Flintstone Bank building. We have, <laughs> we have the bank buildings at the intersection of North and Huguenot, we have the George Jetson, which was HSBC, and then we have Fred Flintstone, which was uh, 
People's Bank was the most recent. Right. I guess Got uh, it. Chase or Bank of America was its last iteration, and it's been slated for development for the last four years, but it's still there. Uh, and uh, I've actually, for, uh, from 1981 until 2019, I have been in one of three buildings uh, at the intersection of uh, North Avenue and Huguenot, including uh, the uh, K building, uh, when I was of counsel to Muldoon, Horgan, and Lockman. Uh, and then subsequently to that, we had uh, the law offices of Gregory Varian, which uh, matured into the Varian law firm today. You had told me a story, if I recollect, that uh, that Ben Mermelstein, the beloved Ben Mermelstein, who was a judge of the city court, some way uh, was involved in your exposure to the law? Uh, yes, he was. I was, uh, uh, again, growing up in Larchmont. I was 16 years old. I had uh, gotten my driver's license just recently. I was during the probation period, and, uh, and I had gotten pulled over. Uh, not far from where your law office uh, uh, was, maybe at the time, uh, right at Hebe Cadillac, uh, by a patrolman coming in the other direction on motorcycle uh, for going through the red light. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether it was Stevenson Boulevard or the one uh, after right. that. Uh, and um, no, it was Stevenson Boulevard. No, it was uh, Harding, maybe? What was Harding Drive. Harding Drive. Is that the one that exited out at the uh, Heapy Cadillac? Could be. Okay. So, uh, and and uh, I'm going to fight the ticket uh, because uh, I'm in deep trouble being in probation if I get a moving violation, right? And uh, uh, this was a moving violation going through a red light. It's about as bad as you can do uh, when you're when you're in that probationary period on your license. So, so I took the stand and and, and explained how. Uh, where the officer was when he first spotted me and the synchronization of the traffic lights, he was at the traffic light at Emerson, uh, that there was no way he could have seen me uh, uh, when the light was red. It, it would have had to have been green. It was a very uh, scientific analysis of the situation. And uh, I, the judge seemed to be impressed with it. And uh, uh, he asked, uh, after I finished testifying, and stepped down from the stand, he asked the patrolman if he had anything to say. And the patrolman said, yes, Your Honor, just one thing. I'd like to ask Mr. Varian if he was being so cautious and so studious at the time, uh, why he didn't have any shoes on. <laughs> so that was my experience with the judge who uh, nonetheless uh, dismissed Subsequent to that, did uh, Judge Mermelstein recognize you when you appeared? I tried to make sure that he lawyer? didn't recognize me. Okay. I actually disguised right. myself in a way. Oh, so you wore, you wore a pair of shoes? Yeah, I wore a pair of shoes. <laughs> oh, okay. all functions uh, <laughs> having to do with the Bar Association. Now, you had the opportunity to serve as president of our New Rochelle Bar Association, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? That is correct. And am I correct or not correct uh, that you were the one who coined the tagline the New Rochelle Bar Association, the greatest bar association in the world. No, I, I didn't. I, I get the credit because I probably used it at least once a week at every event that I participated in in New Rochelle at the time. But it's actually my predecessor, Barbara Lerman, uh, who was the one most responsible uh, for transforming uh, the New Rochelle Bar Association uh, from a group that would gather for uh, uh, lecturers and, and uh, great dinners uh, and, and, and the most famous uh, holiday uh, dinner of judges uh, known to Westchester County, uh, into which was a rather small group, the actual membership, maybe 75 attorneys, uh, into an organization of uh, upwards of, of 400 uh, members uh, in uh, uh, starting in, let me see what the dates were. So it would have been, I think, 197, uh, 2005 that I was the president, 2005 through 2007, two terms. Barbara preceded me, and, and it was just before she came in as president, I think following uh, Susan Kettner, uh, that uh, uh, CLEs, mandatory CLEs, came into uh, existence. Uh, and, and so now that all lawyers needed to get these credits, at the time, the only ones offering them were law schools. And, and they were rather expensive uh, in order to get 
in order to get your CLE credits, your mandatory CLE credits, uh, Barbara had the idea of merging our sponsors, the title companies, the banks, and others, uh, realtors, and, and uh, having them sponsor it so the North Shore Bar Association could be the provider of the CLE uh, at no cost to our membership. Well, at the time, I think our membership was $25 a year. So you can imagine how that drew people in from, from uh, all over Nourishell and outside of Nourishell. My, my goal when I became president was to expand the organization further uh, by way of trying to, up till that time, uh, the organization had been made up mostly of attorneys who practiced law in Nourishell or White Plains. Uh, and knowing how many lawyers resided in the city of Nourishell, or knowing them in the thousands, my thought was, let's try to get all those people that are lawyers, whether they work in Nourishell as lawyers, or whether they live in Nourishell and practice or don't practice elsewhere, New York City, Stanford, et cetera, that we draw them in. Uh, because again, we have free CLEs. Uh, but also because we can connect uh, uh, the, the, the larger the size, the greatest, the, the greatest number of experts that we can all tie into, we can bring into our network where we get, you know, uh, attorneys in New York City uh, and, and they get from us what's going on here in their hometown. Okay, we'll continue where we are. Go. Well, I don't know where I was. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I, maybe I was I talking about right. uh, off the record. You were talking about getting a lawyers who both reside. Yeah, but I think I finished. The okay, then I'll go on to go on to the next question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Ready, Juan? Yes, go ahead. So, Greg, we've known each other uh, in the practice for a number of years now, since going back to the 80s. Do you remember how did we first meet? I don't, I don't know if it was we first met, but our first professional engagement. Uh, was uh, uh, the purchase uh, of my first home, uh, still my home, uh, at 35 Sydney Street in Nourishell, uh, 1985, I believe it was October. Uh, the Gutmans were your clients. They were the sellers, Bob, and you were the attorney for the sellers. Uh, and, and after finding all the problems with this house, I promise you the statute of limitations has ended. No, you weren't my attorney, so you have no liability. Uh, the fact is that that closing is one I will remember. Uh, that house and that location in Nourishell, one block in from North Avenue uh, and one block from uh, our biggest neighbor in Halcyon Park, Iona College. Uh, is responsible uh, in many ways for my uh, development of land use as, as the niche, as the part of law that, that I enjoy most and, and, and have worked at uh, uh, progressively all these years, uh, whether it be CLEs with the Bar Association, variant on variances, or my involvement in civic organizations, neighborhood associations uh, in uh, Nourishell, uh, but, but that purchase of a home in the Halcyon Park neighborhood in, in Nourishell was really a defining moment for me. I didn't know, uh, and, and uh, in terms of driving up and down North Avenue every day, commuting to work, uh, and wondering why is this so screwed up as our only North-South corridor here in, in Nourishell? So working on that, having a developer uh, uh, of a project uh, over the course of 10 years that never got built on Pelham Road uh, involving dockominiums and a high rise and being before the uh, Court of Appeals on three Article 78s uh, and variances, um, uh, it, it was just a wonderful experience and I, I uh, am thankful uh, and grateful uh, for, for finding that first home, which remains my home, and, and seems to uh, be at the forefront of all legal issues having to do with land use, whether it's a neighborhood uh, that has a, a user of the land next to it, 
for very different purposes and therefore very uh, contradictory or challenging pressures as neighbors. I own a college. Whether it's a commercial district that's very narrow, and how do you develop that commercial district? How do you make it functional again, North Avenue, while protecting the residential neighborhoods and, and actually help them to thrive, whether it's Rochelle Park, Rochelle Heights, uh, Halcyon Park, Forest Heights. We can go all the way uh, through New Rochelle. And in terms of flooding, which uh, is, is what I am getting the most calls on now as a land use attorney, because uh, in the law, uh, the principle is that you can't make your drainage problem your neighbor's problem. Well, what does that mean when all of your neighbors are draining onto your property and you're in turn draining onto everyone else's property? So when we have the volume of rain we had with Ida, uh, uh, following uh, the rain we had the previous weekend with Henri, um, we're, in a new, we're in a new world. Back in 2007, when we, we first got floods, I bought a house uh, built in 1905 that didn't have water until 2007. I wish I had known that in 1987 when I put an addition onto it, which included a basement apartment. Um, the fact is we're in a different place. Back in 2007, we were told by the city engineer, the only way you're ever going to prevent another damage from another 100-year storm is putting your houses on stilts and turning North Avenue into a canal. I said, when, when are we going to do that? I think that's a great idea. We can have gondola drivers to uh, Iona College. It'd be a, a, a unique mark. The point is, if these rains continue, um, we're, we're going to have to do a lot of things differently, whether it be at the building department level, whether it be at the federal level in terms of infrastructure, the state, and the county, and the municipality. And, 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 uh, but for you being on the uh, transaction that allowed me to be uh, a resident of Halcyon Park and this great city, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful. Well, Greg, I am just absolutely flattered to think that I got you started in Varian on Variances. I didn't know that until today. You and Ted Turner. And Ted Turner. Uh, well, and the other thing I must say, listening to your response, I'm wondering if we can get a CLE credit for just what we've heard you talk about. I don't, I, well, we could, I don't know if we can get them after the fact, but uh, I'll, I'll work with the committee to see if uh, watching this program would allow people You're to file very, for CLE. Very, very articulate. And uh, let me ask you, because of that, uh, you've taught many CLEs, but you also have other teaching and lecture experience, don't you? Yes, I, I uh, uh, taught uh, the, the real estate the realtors uh, certification program, salesperson, broker, uh, the Westchester Board of Realtors, which is now Gateway Association, takes in five counties. Uh, I taught paralegals at uh, Manhattanville. Uh, and, and, and then Mercy, Mercy College, when they had a program. Um, the fact is that uh, as a practitioner, uh, the, the, the challenge of being a small practitioner uh, is, is that it's, it's almost impossible to be expert at everything. It's, it's very difficult to be a litigator and to manage your own law firm. And early on, I started out in personal injury at the law firm of Penelli Moore, Bosco Penzel, and McMillan, uh, with a guy Richard Danzig, who, who sure. that was his field, uh, and and I I realized early on there was just no way I could be a, a litigator and manage a general practice law firm. Uh, so what I I gave up the litigation, but I realized shortly thereafter that I I needed an audience. I just I you know that that's something I had to have and and. Uh, so I became a teacher uh, uh, because, A, I love this stuff, and I, I love trying to explain what I love. That's beautifully stated. Let me ask you, any parting advice to some of our younger attorneys who may be viewing this video? I think what our biggest challenge is, is that when I became a lawyer, it was a profession. Um, and, and as part of the economic changes that have occurred over the last 40 years, um, we've been, or the, the pressure is to turn us into a commodity. 
I mean, anybody that's done real estate closings, I'm sure, has gotten that phone call. How much right. for a real estate closing? Well, first of all, what are you buying? A co-op. Well, that's not real estate. Right. And, and so this idea that we've got to somehow market ourselves where people that don't know what they're asking for are, are going to get your services only if you're the cheapest commodity out there, it, it, it's the wrong way to go. So I, what, I, what I would suggest is, rather than trying to get the largest clientele, find out what you love doing, and then make sure people are coming to you because they know you're the one that is good at that. Well stated. I can remember people asking, Mr. Allman, how much do I owe you? And uh, I'd say to them, how about thinking about paying me half as much as you would have been willing to pay me the first day you came into my office with this problem that's now resolved, right? So it's well stated, Greg. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for the interview.